Keep 100% of your claim. Chief for Claims. If you've been hurt in a road accident that wasn't your fault, you should really talk to G4 Claims first. Unlike road accident solicitors, we don't charge you for our services, which could see you better off. To keep 100% of your compensation, have a chat with Nicole and the team. You'll be glad you did. Search online for G4 Claims. Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. <laughs> Father said to me, put this scarf around your neck and sing the blues with me. And now I am much older, there's a place I want to be. It's red for said it's beautiful, and steeped in history. And I know what I'll find when the place comes alive. And welcome back once again to the Bears Corner here on the Battle Fever Network. Before we start, big thank you and uh, again to our sponsors, G4 Claims and uh, Company Suisse. Thanks for all your support throughout the season, guys. Very, very much appreciated. Um, before we start, just I say, yeah, we've been away for a couple of weeks. Unfortunately, uh, everybody's had personal equipment. Um, I was out the country. Geo was out the country. Um, so the Paul and Geo show, as, as, it's, as it currently is, couldn't take place, um, and, and and everybody else has been kind of busy with work and stuff. So apologies, we we do have some stuff to talk about, although it is an international break. But uh, we'll 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 skim over some stuff and we'll just throw some stuff out to you guys, and we'll get some conversation going. So anyway, before we go any further, as I mentioned before, it's my partner in crime. It's Gio. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, mate. I'm good. It's good to be back, Paul. In it, it's good to be back. It's good. Yeah. I genuinely despise international week or fortnight or whatever it's called, mate. It's just it's shit. It's like the off season, isn't it? It's like the summer yeah. when there's no Rangers. At least, at least you have <laughs> something to look forward to. I mean, I hadn't been for email or sorry, lost email FC. We would have we would have had a game on on the weekend there to, to talk about, yeah. but unfortunately, we don't, mate. So, but still plenty to talk about, isn't there, buddy? There's been there's been a lot's happened since we've last seen you, and 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 we always asking her, where's the tan? Where is the tan? This 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 is me tanned. I'm pale blue by colour naturally. I went I went white and I was thrilled with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's bad lightning here. I do actually I do actually have a tan. I, I do actually have uh, tan no, lines white. Like tan lines see, white, but, but I am not like, showing them. Look at this. So my light can change. It's like a it's like a nice uh, yellowy glow, and then there's pure off, and then there's white. So I'm gonna keep mine on. That's why I look like I've got a wee tan. Yeah, mine does the same. It's, it's it's natural or it's LED, um, and it and it basically it's shocking when it's on the LED. It makes me look like Casper the Ghost, or as somebody once Thank said you. when I walked into a room with, with oh my god, I don't say he thought we were locked in the cellar. Is that uh, is that uh, uh, Callum cellar? <laughs> Callum cellar, yeah, down in that day yeah. London, yeah, hi, yeah. No, um, yeah, we we uh, we had to take some time away and stuff like that. So we do apologize. It just so happens it fell in nicely with the European legs, both of them for me and the the Hibs match. Um, but I, I do know somebody in the chat who made very good use of my season ticket. Um, if, even <laughs> even if they even if they weren't a very good luck charm, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> no, so um, yeah, so I so we, we we have we did have the two European games, um, away yes. and then home, Scottish Cup quarter final. And then, of course, the game that wasn't postponed game uh, and kind of fallout from um, basically the semi-final and that uh, the postponed game. So, as I say, we had we had the 
I'll, I'll just briefly talk about the, the the Benfica games, and we can we can we can just sort of do it one big hit if you really want, because I know that right. we're both kind of need to get on with things after this as well. So I thought that, I thought that the away game we played really really well, and we were very unlucky not to get away with a with with a victory in in Lisbon. And I, I, I I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, people in the chat, you can Google this, but I'm pretty certain that Conor Golson scored two goals this season. Both have been away from home, uh, <laughs> own goals in European fixtures. So I think that's it. Yeah, so I think we're unlucky, Gio, especially being away in Lisbon. Paul, I'm going to be honest with you, mate. I missed the match live. I was away with work. I was away down in London. And it's mm. the first match, first live Rangers match I think I've missed in about 10 years. Um, you know, so I, I didn't, I seen the result and then I watched it back later. Look, you, you, you can't you can't say a, a two two each a result away from home in a in a in a high pressurized European leg wasn't a, a fantastic result. But when you watch it back and see the likes of the OG, see the likes of the De Maria stuff, see the likes of 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 all the other wee bits and pieces, the handball, the way it was head first and hat and mm. arm later, all of those wee things sort of conspired against us. Um, you know, so look. Like I said at the beginning there, mate, two each away from home, you know, you'd sort of go, I'd have that every day of the week. But yeah, definitely. Look, on reflection, mate, it could have been a wee bit better for us. But yeah, I still think it was a hell of a result. You know, I don't think anybody would have fancied us, you know, to go away, especially off the back of, off the, back of the Motherwell result. I don't think anybody really would have fancied us to go over there and get anything. Never mind a credible draw. So, you know, yeah. when, when when I seen the result and then I watched it back, I went, yeah, you know what? I, I, that's a hell of a result away from home. Yeah, I was like you. I missed it. I missed it live, but I saw I saw the highlights, uh, and I thought we were incredibly unlucky. Um, and I and I was just about to say what Paul McGarrigal was saying here. Maria should not have been on the park in the second leg. Yeah, he should have been. He should have been sent off. Why? It's it's an yeah. absolute. It's a mystery why he wasn't. Yeah, the whole the whole thing, mate. The whole the whole handling of, of of the refereeing on the evening. And look, I I don't want to sound like a fucking conspiracy junkie, mate. That them across the road can do all that there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So essentially, mate, you're looking at that, and that's what I'm saying. It's all of those wee small things conspire to go against us. And unfortunately, um, you know, overall over both legs, it wasn't great. No, I haven't had a wee hurt cut up. Or I'm a rock in the Sydney. I'm a rock in the Sydney. I'll try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've you've got you've got a wee bit of a, a, bit of a, a thing. Somebody said to me, actually, I got a guy who works with, with the guy who does my hair. Yes, he said that he spotted. He's a Rangers fan. He spotted me at Ibrox, and he said, "I saw you coming through the, pot, the crowd, Paul, because you get your wee sharks fin." And I was like, oh, fuck "Off." But <laughs> 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 uh, here, yeah. like you know, Mo's made a really good point there. <coughs> you know, considering a depleted yeah. squad that did well, uh, would have called it a funny formula. They said on October we'd be in the last sixteen. Absolutely, yeah. Mo. I, I, I'm in hundred percent agreements with you. I think one thing. And it was, you know, Paul, I know we'll go on to talk about the second game, but it's one thing, it's testament that, you know, that that how far this squad, how far this team have, have how far the club have come when you were considering that, you know, Stephen Davis's first game in charge was a 1-0 defeat away to, was it a 2-1 defeat away to Limassol? Um, yes. Yeah, and then to turn that around, to go away with, with Philip Clement, beat Betis away from home, you know, get it, get a two-each draw away. And again, you know, Jay, Jay Gallagher saying there about you if it obviously didn't want us to get to the final. <laughs> um, I, well, I think, mate, I think it would have been a hell of a, a hell of a journey if, if we'd have got to Dublin. But you know, I have seen a lot of people say, you know, you know, it, it, it's a, it's almost like a blessing in disguise. It was left with a lot of credibility. But yeah, mate, the second game in itself. What did you think about that, mate? Again, I thought we were kind of unlucky. We, we dominated, um, and. Parts of the game was wasn't it? It was like it's like yeah. They, 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 quite, they, they seemed quite they, determined to sit in, Paul, didn't they? Well, that's the because that's the thing that, that that's what Benfica are pretty good at. That they are they've, they've got a pretty poor defence. The midfield is okay, but the front the the forward line sort of the forward end is devastating. And what they were, they were they, what they were trying to do is they were trying to draw us out. Aye. And, and then hit, hit, hitting the counter, and they were doing yeah. that very successfully. And ultimately, that's what that's what got us. As soon as as soon as they they scored the goal, I thought, well, that's off, that's that's offside. I, then that's it, it. then it came, then it came back to the the replay. And I was sitting in the I was sitting in the Bluebells bar in in Costa Tigues and Lanzarote with the, all of these Rangers fans. And they're going, it's offside. I'm saying, actually, it's not. He's in his own half. Therefore, right. by the letter of the law of the game, I tell you what, he's, he's, close, he's onside. It? It just, yeah, it just shows you, Paul, that you know, and again. We, we have been through 
so many different things when we're describing Cyril Dessers this season. I, I called him the biggest donkey in the world. Go back four weeks and you were probably listening to me say how brilliant he's become. And go, he's, he's turned back into Cyril Dessers again, hasn't he? Yes, he, he has. Into yeah. that, that player. You know, we were really, really let down through a depleted squad, like people have said in the comments, but also mm. by that lack of button edge quality in the final yeah. third. We seemed to dominate areas and sections of the game. We had a lot mm. of possession, you know, in, in parts of the game. We controlled parts of the game. But when it really mattered, mate, we were undone by quality. And that was the difference. Yeah. And who was the one who hit the ball down? Di Maria. You know, yeah, and, and again, exactly. We're, like, we're, we're, we're playing against World Cup winners. We're playing against a squad. And I, you know, I know people will come back and go, oh, but when we play Scottish teams in, 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 in home, we're playing against teams who have got a minuscule budget compared to us. But, you know, we're, you, you, you know, we're talking about levels here. You know, we're talking about going up like the elite levels of the yeah. European competition. And it just shows you with the teams that are still in there, mate. You've got Milan, you've got Liverpool, um, Dortmund's in there, I think, as well. Um, you know, at Roma are in there as well, yeah. who, give, who give the likes of Brighton the Hayden. So, look, I, I, again, on the night, I thought the, 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 the crowd were fantastic. I thought the guys, you, you know, the supporters, on a really, really poor night, mate, weather-wise, it was, it was shocking. Again, that was a that was a real leveller. Um, you know, like Fiona's saying, we were down to the absolute bare bones. Yeah. It's hard to fault them. And I, seen, I think that, mate, that was why the crowd stayed behind and, and really clapped them off. When it would have been easier for a lot of people, mate, to, to go and... And the Subway Loyal Brigade, they leave 10 minutes early, but I think the majority of the stadium stay behind to clap them off because they've seen what the players give. They give everything, mate. But we yeah. just, on that night, we just lacked that bit of quality. I think I agree, I agree with you. It was, it was the lack of quality and cutting edge in, at the very final third. Um, and and Dessers has been, he started, he started very poorly. He came on to a game. He's now going, he's now reverted to type again, unfortunately for us. Yeah. I like him, to, once again, I like him to, to step up after the international break and prove us all wrong again. But he seems to yeah. revert, seems to have reverted back to type. But Cyril's being Cyril. Um, I, I think uh, we always said, and I had a horrible gut feeling in the, after the January transfer window, the lack, straight, saying, Failure to sign a recognised striker uh, yeah. could could come back to bite us. And if we'd had a finisher, a natural finisher in, in the team there, I, I think we could have. Uh, I think we we we, we who, who knows? It's in the lap. Of the, you yeah. know, it's just yeah, exactly. It's, mate, it's, all with, with, it's with hindsight. Amazing, yeah, of course it is. But you yeah. know, but, but it, it, I reckon it would have given us a, a better chance. A, a couple of a, a natural Absolutely. finisher would have taken a couple of those chances presented yeah. to Dessers. Even Paul, um, even somebody to even somebody to hold that up. You know, the rag doll, the defenders a wee bit, the pull the spaces out. Big, big Cyril just what he was just having a Cyril mess, a Cyril Dessers night. You know, he just yeah. wasn't, he wasn't holding it up. He wasn't bringing people into play. I know he tries hard, mate. I know he does all that stuff. You know, Jay Gallagher saying there, that squad cost over 100 million to assemble. I get it. Mate. They're yeah. able to afford players that we can't even think about affording. But at the end of the day, Ibrox for us, European nights, Thursday nights under the lights, it's always been a leveler. And with our crowd yeah. and with our fans and with our team, we have always been able to take it up a notch. And I just think, mate, they tactically got it right in terms of utilising their pace and breaking us down. And and for some reason, we also seem to conspire against ourselves by leaving nobody back whenever no. we were taking corners. And we were yeah. almost got done a couple of times. Look, like I said, mate, it, it, it was, it's been a hell of a run again. We've restored that pride again in Europe, you know, again, after some some really per and strange performances and the likes of that Limassol team. You know, I think we got ourselves back in, and 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 yeah, you know, the, the the team can be the team can be proud of their achievements, and you know, look, it was probably a step too far. Depleted squad, I think it lots was. of injuries, yeah. lots of fitness worries as well. Paul, don't forget, there's a lot of guys out there. You know, don't forget, we started a game, you know, literally two or three months ago with Dujon starting playing center center midfield. Then he yeah. played right wing. He's been all over the place, mate, and that just shows you the way the managers tried to utilize the squad. But I just think it was probably a step too far at the end of the day. Yeah, he's he's now play, he's now playing the part of the um, the sussy and dummy in in the, in the um, medical room because he's been injured, isn't he? That's it. Um, That's it, it should, it should, uh, I think uh, there's been been lots of comments made within the chat about lack of uh, lack of uh, resources available to fill fill them on. Yeah. And the injuries we've been carrying, people but running on fumes, and you could see at the yeah. coming the big guys at the ends. They were they were the, the legs are completely gone from the squad because we they put so much in. Uh, yeah, and we've not we've not been able to rotate as much as he'd liked because of the injuries we've been carrying. Yeah. and the play and don't forget, the there was a there was a there was a Scottish Cup game in there as well against him. Yeah, you know, March has yeah. been March has been a bit of a 
a bollocks month for us, having it, you know, with, yeah. a, with a defeat away, the defeat at home to Motherwell, and again, then getting that reaction, then coming back, playing Hebs, and then, you know, back home and, 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 and playing them really per night. Paul's asked a really good question, though, by the way, mate, about what three players do you think that could be massive for us in the run into the end of the season? That's, that's a really, that's a cracking question, mate. You know, yeah. me for Cantwell, one, I, definitely. Cantwell, yeah, and it was great to see him coming back in. You could just see yeah. the Todd Cantwell spark coming back in. You know, it, it, Todd yeah. Cantwell definitely could be, mate. Um, you know, I, I know you're going to laugh. I'm probably laughing at myself in my own head. Kamar Roof could potentially be a huge player for us, considering we're lacking in that striking area. If we're, if well, Josh Barry said that as well. He, he yeah. said that today. He's, 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 he foresees him just coming off the bench and being one of these people that comes off the bench and scores goals. Uh, I and, think and uh, I, he's proved already, mate. He's capable of that. You know, we, everyone said it. We've all said it. He's our most naturally gifted finisher in the club. Yeah. You know, so he could be massive. Just you know, what have we got? Nine or ten league games left, mate. You know, here's hoping that you know everything crossed and he can all, stay fit. It all depends on who who we manage to get back from injury. If Seema comes yeah. back and, and we get and we start getting play a couple of games, Seema's going to be massive for us. Jack Butland is clearly going to be very big, but, but huge for us because yeah. uh, for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, because of what his presence in the box, uh, his short stopping capabilities, the, the the confidence he puts in the defenders in front of him, and purely because Fee in the in the, in the chat and Mo obviously are clearly in love with him. Um, and uh, I think people like, people like uh, Demondi uh, could be. Could, he, he started really well, then he made he got those first couple of goals in his first couple mm. of games, and then he's had his wee bit of a dip. Look, I think that's only natural. The kid has literally just started at the club and has not really done a preseason because obviously the way their leagues are structured, and then come in and all of a sudden threw himself into the the, the, the mix, and then he's having that wee sort of dip. So I fully yeah. expect him to come out of it. Paul's Paul again raised, raised a really good one there. He said Seema Diamond and Lawrence, Well, Butland starting. If we can keep Tom Lawrence fit, he could be massive for us. <laughs> Jay Gallagher, loving, loving Dessers, Mo saying Butland. It, do you know what, mate? It, 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 literally, it's so difficult to see, but everyone, you know, everyone yeah. is capable of coming in and making a difference. Look at Tom Lawrence a few weeks ago, and he's come in and really stepped up and put in some huge performances. Sterling again has put in some huge performances. You know, Butland is obviously massive. I thought Tav the other night, mate, again, defensively was very, very good. Maybe he didn't get forward as much as he did, but, you know, defensively against Benfica at home, he was he was outstanding. John Suter as well, you know, again, has had his ups and downs, but when he's on form, it's phenomenal. Big John, yeah, brilliant. His distribution. He's, he's, is, he's, good, he's, good at dri- he's good at driving out yeah, the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, here's hoping that, you know, the, the likes of Big Connors had a, maybe had a wee bit of a, a turnaround in fortunes as well. He seemed yeah. to have had a brain fart the last couple of weeks. So yeah, it's, it's every one of them, mate. Every one of them are massive to us. I, yeah, you know, I'd almost forgot about Sima. You know, Sima. You know, you'd almost forgot how influential he was. And and let's be honest, in, in a really poor first half of the season, was so influential. Went away to the the African Cup of Nations, got, got injured, and then we almost forgot about him. So yeah, again, if he's able to come back, come back over this international break. And 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 be integrated into that team, but it just seems like we're we're starting to hopefully Paul get out of a few of these injuries, mate, which is yeah. which has ravaged us this season. So how we're even in a position, mate, to be where we are, considering how how so many injuries we've had, considering how many injuries we've had, is absolutely phenomenal, mate. Absolutely phenomenal. Definitely. Um, and and uh, talking of that, uh, I think the uh, the fact that the the match uh, in the weekend was postponed, it, it was a uh, as much as we want to get the game played. Uh, and, and attempt to get back to take to, to the top spot away again. I think, um, yeah, Newton Newton could start picking up the value, definitely. I think, um, I, th- I think it'd be a, a blessing in disguise, um, Aye. uh, given the injuries we have and uh, the heavy legs and the, the, the state of the pitch and stuff like that. We'll come to that, we'll come to that a wee second. I'll just go, I'll just jump back, slightly, if you don't mind, just to um, yeah, the well, match. The Hibs, the Hibs match. So we we obviously we had the, the quarter final against Hibs at Easter Road. Uh, Two 0 yeah. winners. Uh, John Lindstrom uh, scored and uh, Fabio Silva as well. I'm not going to go in depth in the match or anything like that because this is not what it's about this evening. Uh, I think we were deserved of the victory. I think we we rode a luck a little bit at times. I think Butland got away with one and the ball kind of stuck. He tried to take it across his two yards out from his thing and again caught caught his feet and the guy slid in and it hit the post. I think he was yeah. very very lucky there. 
and they had a, a couple of headers and stuff like that. But essentially, we pretty much controlled the match. It was kind of a war of attrition in the midfield. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we, we got we got the penalty, which was a penalty, irrespective of what Michael Stewart says. And this is this is what I'm kind of getting to. Now. I am getting absolutely sick to the back teeth of this absolute weapon being on the TV, commentating their matches when the bias is off the scale. It is unbelievable. It is unprofessional. And why via sports? Continually well, hire, hire him and the BBC as well. He is, I mean, it is, it is unbelievably it, bad. I mean, I can I can understand not liking the club, but to be it's so unprofessional, and just say, oh, that's not a, that's never that's never a penalty. You didn't touch. It's a fucking clear penalty. And even right. even the if, even the red card, guy jumps in and get uh, uh, off. He's he's out of control when he hits Lundstrom. All right, it doesn't. It, it, it be, to be fair, to be fair, he just hits Lundstrom, uh, but yeah. he does hit him. And he, but he's two feet in. But you seen him? He lined, lined, he lined launched him up, didn't he? he lined well, him up. That's from, it. Uh, he he just, just, it, it was make, a really good challenge. Make, I, yeah, make make this shoot and goes, oh, that's a, uh, oh, that's, that's a red card. And then he goes to replay. He goes, actually, no, I don't. It's a red card. No, no, I no, I no. It's almost like it's a fucking red card. He's out of control. He's not in well, control. Generally, mate, we should not give that absolute weapon any oxygen at all you should not waste a single breath on him no. like you mate i i am i am genuinely genuinely confused as to how anyone values his opinion in in the game um but what it does do mate it creates controversy it gets people talking and broadcasters love that shit it's when something mm. comes on and spouts his stuff it gets people talking it gets people watching the clips it makes me pe- somebody somewhere some marketing genius somewhere actually thinks that this stuff works and gets people engaged. People well, do not a- watch people do not watch the Hibs and Rangers game to listen to Michael Stewart. They watch it because they they they, they like either of those teams, they, they follow yeah. those teams, or they're just watching a football match. They're not listening yeah. to it. They're, they're listening to an uneducated buffoon speak about what he doesn't know and fucking biomechanics and all this shit. Oh, the guy's he's, an absolute... He's an absolute he's, arsehole, mate. He's an arsehole, he's a, he's a, and I genuinely... He's, he's a walloper. I, he's, uh, he's I, just, I, I'm he's, trying he's to think of other words idiot. to describe Michael Stewart. He's a great idiot. And, I, I, right. and that's, I'm, I'm, tr- I'm trying not to be too... What's what I'd look for? Uh, insulting to him using you know because you could you could and we've used all the words against him but I'm just trying to say the guy's just he's an absolute balloon as you say the thing about Chris yeah. Sutton is Chris Sutton if you if you listen to him to him doing punditry about English football and even against clubs he know he didn't doesn't like down in England he's very fair he's very balanced he's very nuanced he comes up here to Scotland and it's completely yeah. the opposite. He's just yeah. he's this unhinged commentator. And you just and, it, and you're right. The reason he does that up here is because it gets generates clicks. It's a click, yeah. he's click yeah. it's clickbait it. material. Down south, he's just a commentator who's in and to be fair, when he's down south commentating English games and doing and doing punditry, he's actually very good. He's yeah. not that no, if you watch if you watch if you watch him talk sports stuff like that, um yeah. or I can't remember I can't remember there's one he does with Ali McCoy and, and some other uh, Scottish guy and the theme sit and chat. Uh, um, Curry. And, yeah, yeah, Davo Curry. And yeah. they're actually they actually have a very good laugh and and, 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 the, and the McCoy, TN, McCoy it used to be BT McCoy, sports, the TNT. That's thing. right. And McCoy yeah. beats him down and says, Oh come on, Chris, you know you're not like that. He goes, Oh, okay, you know, he's just and yeah, so like, man, he knows, he knows that the difference is he's a, he's a pantomime right? baddie, yeah, but he's, yeah, but, he's exactly. but it's but it's infuriating he has he yeah. feels he has to do that. Yeah, yeah. But Michael Stewart lets his disdain and his hatred of Everything Rangers, everything British, even let's be honest. Yeah, with Paul, he, he, he's a he's an SMP failure and a reject in that in, in itself. Yeah, so he lets his, his disdain and his hatred of everything Rangers, everything British get in the way of, of commentating. Now, here's the thing, man, he probably could be a decent enough commentator, but when he comes out with shit like that, there, when a blind man could see that it was clearly a red card, that Hibs had completely Hibs it by that stage, had lost the head. They've given away penalties. They, they, they weren't even in really in the game up until that no, point. No, no. You know, they, they weren't. Rangers really controlled the game without creating a lot of stuff. You know, look, let's not give the, the throbber any more, you know, our time, mate. He, he's, a, he's, an, he's, an arse, he's an arse hole and he, he doesn't have any place in the game. But unfortunately, mate, they will continue to employ him. You know, BBC got rid of him for a stage as well because we, we yeah. complained about him and then they brought him back. He's probably had his knuckles wrapped about that there and thinks, oh, this is a different platform. I can get this off my chest. 
that's not giving many. That's not giving many art committees. He's a, he's yeah, a yeah. It just it just shows how big a mode on he is. If even if even the SNP won't select him because they're the well, biggest. Well, exactly, bunch, man, exactly. They're the and biggest bunch. Of, biggest bunch of dribbling simpletons in, in government <laughs> just now. When even Neil Lennon's disagreeing with him, that's how you know. And I Lennon know, can yeah. let his hatred get in the way of us as well. But in fairness, when we're actually saying that Neil Lennon. Is a saint compared to Michael Stewart. It shows you how far, how far they've come. Yeah, but yeah, but here's the thing: Neil Lennon understands football. He understands, and he, and he won't, and he won't let his bias get in the way of making himself look an idiot. He may, he may, he may, he may sort of bite his tongue to say it and not like doing it. But if he doesn't do it, he's going to look a complete fool. Yeah. And so, he, so yeah. he'll at least he'll at least man up and say, okay, yeah, it's not a penalty, or it's or it definitely is a penalty, or it definitely is a red card. But inside, he's going, I wish I didn't fucking get it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? It's, yeah. And that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Of yeah, course it is. Chris course Boyd is. does it every week. Chris Boyd does it every does. week. And, yeah. and, and do you know what? Everybody knows Chris Boyd's a Rangers fan. Everyone yeah. knows Chris Boyd loves the club and, 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 and has Rangers apart and does all those things because of his Rangers allegiance. Neil Lennon will say things because of his, his, his Celtic allegiance, and that's fine. Everyone knows that. Is. But don't try to be an impartial pundit and, and give opinions on the game and be blatantly, obviously, and clearly... You know, disingenuous about where your allegiances lie. He's worked for Celtic. That's fine. If he hates Rangers all that oh, much, yeah. just and say it. Just, just be say like it. Sutton, <laughs> be like Sutton and be the pantomime villain, but don't try and pretend we, that you're you're there to be impartial, which is obviously not. I, I, I know. I know. He searches his name and all these sort of things. So if you're watching Michael, which I'm well, you probably are at some point. <laughs> if, you, if you if you if you can if you can, if you can see he's now through the tears, just just fess up. Uh, just say just listen, say. Oh, we'll have to be very I careful. Let's hit. hit what's this new hit? Hate, hate, hate crime yeah. or oh. hit law act or whatever. We'll have to be very yeah, careful. Well, that's, that's, a hate, that's a hate crime. Right. Uh, well, if, 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 if he is watching and you can see he's through the tears because the slagging <laughs> he's getting here. What I would say, what I would say to him is, just face up, just say, oh, I don't like Rangers. It's as simple as that. I'd say we'd, we'd respect you more. It's, it's, it's putting on this bloody act that you're an impartial commentator and pundit. Aye. Anyway, that's enough of Michael we also, we also got confirmation today of the um, email FC game and when that's going to be. So that's actually going to be directly after the Celtic game. So we've got the Sunday match and then that, which again, you know, it, it, you know, I thought genuinely made a did think that they would have played it on the Wednesday before, but you know, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it gives us a wee bit of time. I to think, get back I and think, cover. I think there's other football on and other channels that kind of conflicts right. and they can't and they, they couldn't get it into the schedule. I think that's what it is. It's nothing to do with any conspiracy against you know mm. the, the, the the team that's won every trophy bar three in the last 10, 12, 10, 12 years. You know, I mean, because because we know though this is the, this is what we're going to talk about now is the fact that the the Dundee match was postponed because of a waterlogged pitch. It's the fourth time it's happened at Dens Park this season. Um, so I think some something needs something needs to be done. So I think Dundee are going to get their knuckles well, wrapped. Well, and, and I, I think Sky are turning turning the screws. In this. But what I will say to this is this, and uh, just we can we can talk about this if you don't mind, because this is right. just jumped into my mind. Dundee will turn around and say, we do not have the financial resources to do anything better with our pitch yeah. because we've got no money coming in. Sky will turn, turn around and say, well, it's unacceptable because we are paying a premium for this. Now, truth of the matter yeah. is, Sky are, Sky are not paying a premium. Sky, yeah. are paying a, in fact, Sky, are paying a, Sky are paying Scottish football with loose change they found in the back of a sofa. And that is purely down to the SPFL and the SFA not negotiating a decent enough deal for us. Yeah. So if you want to point the finger direction at lack of finances coming into the, into the, into the Scottish football, um, it's purely down to the SPFL and the Neil Doncaster and the, and the rest of the cohorts. Now, I sympathise the way for Dundee not being able to spend millions and millions on a pitch that we've got, which is a hybrid pitch with super drainage and it, matches never get called off. Mm. It's only an extremist will get called off. They've they've got they've got their own problems or the or the, the location the situ of the of the ground is with drainage. Uh, it's partly sits on an old lime quarry. You know, people say no limestone is porous, therefore what? Just, yes, it is. If it's broken down, if it's in rock solid rock form, it will it, is, it will go through it. But it's slow seeping. So Dundee will claim, you know. Um, we, we we don't have the finances to do this, and that's and because there's no money coming in through the Scottish game, and that's purely down, purely down to uh, the, the the SPFL. Now, Philip Clement said Sky are paying an awful lot of money to uh, to broadcast these games. He's yeah. right, Sky are, Sky are paying money to broadcast the games. And it's the only thing I've ever disagreed with Phil Clement since he's come here. Sky are not paying a lot of money. 
No. Sky, no, the, Sky like you said, it's, 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 it's changed in the back of a sofa. It, it's, 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 look, we, we have discussed Doncaster to the nth degree. We, we've discussed the TVD beyond what we need to and, and beyond what we can do. You can literally copy and paste 20, you know, of our podcast. Back of what we've done. I, yeah. it, it's, it's shocking me. And again, I don't mean this in any, in any bad way, but I think the women's game in England is actually being get more than what we're getting, you know. Yes, audience. it is. And that, that, that's, but let's be honest, we're, we, you know, we do have a really good product. You only need to look at there. And I've always said this, mate. There's some cracking players in the league. There's some absolute dross, but there's also some cracking players as well. You only need to look at the likes of Lewis Ferguson's breakthrough season in Italy to see that he will his next move will be a mega move. So we've got some yeah. cracking players. The young boy Lennon, um, who plays for Motherwell, he's 17 years of age. He's a Wilson, who plays for Kilmarnock. What a what a, yeah, what a yeah. talent he is. Yeah, there's some smashing players. So you. you but I am in full agreement with you. And I don't want to see any team getting hammered, mate. But when one club, one pitch across the whole of senior football in Scotland and in the UK got cancelled because of rain that happened three days prior, that's not good enough. And Actually, also, to, mate, to be fair, it, 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 rained, it rained the night before. All right. Well, but in fairness, mate, not one single game across the Scottish no. top flight, mate, no. across any league in Scotland. There was junior it, games it, being played in Scotland, mate. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was junior the, games. The, it, and the, the way they handled thing. it as well. Yeah, and the way yeah. they handled it, Paul, they came out and said, oh, at five o'clock in the morning, we were out. Nobody notified Rangers. And I don't know if you if you heard, there was a wee story floating about on Twitter about a young lad and his dad who travelled all the way up from, from the basically the south coast of England, all the way up. It's done like a 10 on or 12 On a coach. Journey. Yeah, on a coach to running. get there and, and to find out an hour before the game. Not good. Really not good. So the way they handle it, and then for their managing director or whatever to come out and try to, try to not good. So some sanction needs to take place. You know, we 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 we've gone on about in the past about fit and proper people looking after clubs, but there surely has to be a minimum standard, Paul, to pro- to to promote the game, to drive the game forward. There needs to be a minimum standard of pitches and facilities and 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 experience to go into the overall package that is Scottish football. And that test needs to be conducted every single season. And if it's if a team doesn't look like they're going to be able to meet to meet it, then you know they 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 obviously cannot get a a, a position in the league. I remember yeah. many, many years ago, I think it was, was it Gretna, where, where, when they had their resurgence 20, That's 25 right. years ago, they weren't actually allowed in the Scottish Top Flight League, I believe, because their, their stadium didn't meet the, cr- the criteria, have, the code. Yeah, they, 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 they played the ground shared with Motherwell, if I remember correctly. That's right. So, you know, they could have used their own Falkirk, stadium. Falkirk, yeah, Falkirk, Falkirk well, was so, denied. You know, when, when Brockville was getting renovated, because they, they had a plastic pitch, one and right. one stand, and Aberdeen were due to get relegated and they lobbied. Yeah. Ab- Aberdeen stayed up and, and uh, Kamalak had to stay down because their ground didn't meet stand. It was just like, what on earth is going on? No, you're right. We, there should be minimal standards. I, I, there, I has think there, be, is, there has to be. I think, because, I think there's a, because Scottish there's a, football as a product suffers, doesn't it? Especially when you get and, that, and that's and that's the problem. Yeah, it, it's, it's just a it's vicious cycle. Because yeah, the, the it's, product, taken, pro, it's taken the, the fact poor. that yeah, it's taken the fact that that game was supposed to be televised live on Sky. And here's a game, mate. This is this is how Scottish football eats itself because it's it's everyone hates everyone loves Scottish football as long as it's not Rangers. I see yeah. comments coming out, especially from Dundee fans, going, "What are we supposed to do?" And this would, there's the, the fact that there's an investigation. This wouldn't happen if, it, if you know, if it wasn't for for the fact that it was Rangers. No, your club has done this four times this season already. You've also turned up half an hour late to your own home fixture because the night before you were down in London having dinner. You know, these uh, that is not indicative of a well-run club, which again reflects on the product overall. You know, so like I have absolutely no sympathy. I, I, I'm not a believer in docking them points and all this here sort of crap. I don't think that's good. And, and we get the three points. I don't want to hear any of that. No, shit. no you but what play I the game. want to see is, yeah, play the game. But, you know, th- this this shouldn't have been a strike one, strike two, strike three, strike four thing. This should have been strike one. You've been given a warning. Strike two, you're out. Then they start docking points. And then and only then, mate, will you see the product get better because they will have to maintain, a, you know, a, a better product for the, for the game. And, and, and it was just, it was so disappointing, you know, again, like, like you know, Paul said there that, you know, and you, you've touched on yourself, mate, the fact that, you know, the guys have travelled, people travel from all over the world to watch Rangers, and all over the yeah. UK especially, but all over the world, and for people to try and make that sort of trip and get outside the stadium when it was cancelled, it's it's not good, not good. I think, I think, I think what Paul's talked about, I think it's Unibet, 
uh, who are, 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 are taking taking care of that that guy. I'll try to find out who it was, but it was I don't know if, I don't know who it was, mate, but it was definitely somebody. But the fact that the fact that they've yeah. and covered their, their travel, brilliant. Brilliant. But like, well, uh, like, yeah, the, there was yeah. thousands of fans. There was thousands of fans that suffered, you know, as a hand with that there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course it was. You know, absolutely, one hundred percent. And and it's only and it's unacceptable. And as I say, Dundee will turn around and say we can't do anything with the pitch because we don't have the finances. The problem we've got, as you mentioned, is that it looks really, really bad. It makes us look like a tin pot leak. And in a way, I can't understand why. Because we get plastic pitches, games getting called off because of a wee bit of rain. Um, we're not having the best product on display. The grounds are looking really tired. In fact, the only pitch, in fact, across the whole of the SPFL, the only pitch that's actually any decent is ours. It's because yeah. we have the only high, we have the only hybrid pitch. We've invested very heavily in it, and, and we it looks great. Um, so, but until we start getting more money coming into the game, I don't think yeah. there's going to be any resolution. It's that, that I vicious do. circle, isn't it, mate? It's it is. vicious circle. But I do, I do understand that they are having a vote next week on plastic pitches and all, all and it just all is. I think it's a free thought. It's a majority, majority rules. I think plastic pitches are going to be gone from next season. So uh, 20, yeah. uh, 25, 26 season. Uh, that's that's my understanding, which which should be a good well, thing. Uh, Look, yes. I, you know, you, like we said, there it's a hugely vicious circle. You've got Doncaster, who's on a two-year retainer or something, isn't he? You can't yeah, get, yeah. You have to give a two a two-year notice period. That's amazing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 like it, it, it roughly half a million pound a year salary. Yeah, um, you know, some of the guys have raised some really good sort of things there. You know, Ryan saying as punishment, the game should be played at Ibrox or in other teams if they lose the right to host a game. You know, that's a that's a good one. Janet's raised a good point there. If games get cancelled, should go back to the teams ground. You know traveling for nothing there needs to be something done mate because again you know it, you know fiona's saying there it's embarrassing it's embarrassing for it for, is embarrassing I, you know and i keep talking about the product because i you know although i'm an ulsterman and i'm from northern ireland i'm very passionate about scottish football i'm very passionate about the game and obviously my own team and i, and I, I you've heard me say many many times mate that you know i always think we should be looking at you know for for talent and, and the product within our own league we should always look at it you know and you know getting a young lad from motherwell or a lewis ferguson or those types of players I've, I've always said that because i believe homegrown players british you know you know you know scottish players have that thing in them you know you only need to look at john lunston and how much he's taken to the club so again i'm always very passionate about the, the you know the scottish game but that is shite Doncaster and and the way they're running it, it, it it's, you... it's so it, it's eating itself, isn't it, man? It's like that two headed yeah. snake or that that snake eating the, the, its own tail. It, it's going to yeah. continually eat itself until people can take their heads out of their own arses and turn around and go, right? How can we drive this game forward? How can we make this game as a product better so we get more investment, so we can get more money into the thing, so people can promote their game from within? But again, man, it always goes back to that same thing. If it's Rangers, then let's hit it. If it's everybody yeah. else, let's love it. But if it's Rangers, let's hate it. It's never going to work. We don't. We don't even have a, a sponsor for the league for next season. Do we, we don't have one. And bear in mind, the person is in charge. The person in charge of trying to get is one is Neil Doncaster, who actually went ahead and got the cinch deal against all legal advice, and that's what brought the court case. And do you know oh. that cinch deal was? I think it was five million over two years or three years. It was that was that was that was a sponsorship deal. Spurs were getting twenty million pound a season to have cinch yeah. on the shirt yeah, sleeve on the shirt. Yeah. That, that, that's 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 the that, that's the level of incompetence that we yeah. are left with. Absolutely, mate. Look, yeah, I, and I agree, know, I, agree, see, I agree. I agree with what Dex has said there. You can't entice people to go to Scotland and see something stuck on the pitches because they'll just think that's an instant leg break right there. Yeah. Not doing that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Look, mate. I, I thought a lot when the whole Dundee thing came out and there was a whole Ferrari, but it had cast my mind right back to um, the lost email situation and and the way. Oh. The way Doncaster and McLennan held the you know the wee pot of money over everyone saying, right, if we end the league now, you can all get the funds released and you'll all get the money. What 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 what, what other type of organization runs itself like that? Do you remember that? Do you remember cut the league short now? Let's give them the title. Oh, and then we'll give you all your money because we all know how you're all suffering financially because of COVID, but you won't get it if we continue to play. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I, I, frightening how it's and I, you know. I remember watching it's all that corrupt. and seeing it, yeah, seeing, seeing it all unfold on Sky and sitting going, we are, and Sky showed a graph going, the only league to end early, the only main European league to end early was Scotland. And mm. every other league was being played out but Scotland. And I yeah. remember like looking at that going, that is criminal. It's absolutely criminal how 
the, you know, a product that we're trying to promote worldwide, that we're trying to get, a, you know, we're trying to attract sponsors in and are trying to bring revenue and all in. That's how you're perceived. That's how you're perceived. But look, mate, we, we, I, I feel I'm heading down that slippery slope of, of yeah, talking about yeah. the SFA let's, and Doncaster. We, 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 we've, yeah, we've done I'm that. I'm starting today. to sound like a, a, a certain uh, other type of mob who just believe in conspiracies. And I absolutely don't. Yeah. But, no, no, know, exactly. Uh, no. But where, where Paul's raised a good point there, could, he, could each team have the 10 grand a month to put aside to pay Doncaster off? Okay, mate, I'll, if I'll, I won I'll, the lottery tomorrow, I would pay him off. I would literally pay him off. I would pay him off. And, and get rid of him. <laughs> yep, the guy's an absolute balloon to quote earlier on. Yeah. Um, well, um, I, I, I think Gio, looking at the time because we say we got things yes, to doing. Um, are you happy? Will I call a, a, a wee shorter one this evening? Call I, yeah, mate. It's, I know you know you know me, mate. I I could talk forever about this crap, but uh, <laughs> yeah. you know it, it it's it's look it's brilliant to be back. I'm I'm gutted that the international break. I'm looking forward to. The Scotland Northern Ireland match. Hopefully, hopefully, young McCausley can make it back. Hopefully, we can see the likes of John Souter, um, you know, coming in and 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 playing. Um, <laughs> Celtic don't want Doncaster to go though. Jay, I know it, mate. I, I know it. It's it's funny, mate, how they all they, they all need him, you know, at, at, at a time, and then you know they'll, they'll all complain about him. I seen yeah. who was it? Else? Somebody else came out today, and 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 was it Hems or somebody put out a statement saying they're. They're disappointed about uh, Motherwell. Result. Motherwell. I mean, I mean uh, let, let's be honest. I mean, if, if only there was uh, a call for an, an, an investigation. An independent into the inquiry. Independent, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And, 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 and all the clubs got it. But, you, you know, but they decided not to. And why? Aye. Because it was Rangers who proposed it. So quite <laughs> frankly, there's no point in Motherwell and Hibs and Aberdeen and Celtic and all them going, for this. we fucking offered to do it. We actually offered to pay for the whole thing, but you went, no, nah, because you're mm. doing it and we don't fucking like you. Well, <laughs> fuck, it's the absolute fucking balloons. But you know what? Right. Our next game back, 30th of March, Hibs at Ibrox, 3 o'clock kickoff. I'm sure you'll be there, mate. Brilliant game to come back to. They'll be yeah. smarting. We'll come back. Hopefully, we'll have a few people back. And, and I think what you might see, mate, considering, uh, you know, a week and a day later is, is a certain old firm game at home in Ibrox, is going to be, you might see a few people creep out of the woodwork and make themselves available. I hope there, I hope there's that. I hope we're <laughs> going to see Todd Cantwell, you know, come back. Uh, <laughs> Todd Cantwell <laughs> should make it back. Seema might be there, thereabouts. Roof will have another couple of weeks under his belt. Ryan Jack might be back. You know, I think, yeah. I think John Lundstrom's probably run himself into the ground over the last couple of weeks. He was... He was a wee bit slack. I know the conditions had a lot to play in the, in the game against Benfica. He just didn't seem to have that Thursday night John Lundstrom feeling in him. You know, he seemed to be knackered. The whole team was knackered. So I, I, I think this game, this this international break probably came at a good time, mate, but it seems so Definitely. long, doesn't it? I mean, we've literally got, what, nine days Nine days until the Teddy Bears are back. It, 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 it's nine days too long. Uh, well, yeah, nine, nine days of purgatory, to be frankly honest. You literally want, you literally want <laughs> to shoot. Do, your, what do we do? What do we do with ourselves? Uh, it's, as, you say, as, you, yeah. as you said, it's like, it's like the off season, but without the sun. It's fucking know, grim. It's, it's crap, <laughs> there, isn't it? It's crap. Mate, I, see, I, I, live uh, the, I live in the west coast of Scotland. We don't see much sun anyway. Yeah? That's, why I, that's why I had to bug it off to the Canary Islands. <laughs> um, Paul McGargle was saying the Scottish under 21s are 3 0. I think Leon Ooh. King. Um, Bailey, and, Bailey Rice is a captain. Oh, that was yesterday. Oh, there you go. That's right. Oh, yeah, he was. That was Bailey Rice. That was yesterday. He, he so was who was that? The under 19s, was it? Yes, he captained under 19s. Under 19s. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, again, it's good to see. You know, look, we have such we have such good, strong young talent coming through. You know, I also seen just as a wee side note as well, mate. Uh, Yanis Hadji's dad coming out and saying he, he's definitely not leaving Rangers next season. Maybe I'll oh, just right. But he came out, mm. I think it was yesterday, and said he fully expects Giannis to be um, back at um, Ibrox next season and kicking on. And it could be, it could be something you yeah. never know. You know, I think we're probably blessed with players in that number ten position. But is is Giannis Hadji going to get much of a game? And you've got the likes of Todd Cantwell there. You've got Tom Lawrence who plays in there. You've got Ian Monday plays in there. Mm. You've got Hadji coming back. He's probably on a big wage. I mean, I mean, to Georgie Hadji can say what he wants. I mean, I can turn around and say, I, I fully expect to be twenty-one again and ripped and and uh, and loaded. It's not going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Oh, and there's another wee rumor floating about. Did you hear that crap 
Trap and Spore in Turkey have apparently agreed a, a pre-contract. Uh, there's Pers some terms with Borna, yeah. Like yeah. Trap's on Spore, yeah. yeah. So it looks like he's off ski. Um, to be fair to Borna, he's uh, he's kind of lost his fight now, hasn't he? Really, he's, he's lost his ass, hasn't he? Mate? He's, yeah, he's, been, he's, 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 been, he's been a good servant. When and when he does go, I'm not. I'll, I'll keep my powder dry just now. I wish him. I will wish him all the best because he has been a good servant. Look, mate. When he, when he was good. He, he was he was probably one of the best attacking through backs left backs we have had in a long long time mate his delivery mm. his crossing I remember that the the game against is it Fanord the the ball he whipped in for um Alfie um for the header oh the header the I, I, and then the, the one count. yeah yeah and the one mate I think he played in Ryan Kent I think for their game with Braga away a couple of seasons ago as well yeah ball it, his ball his delivery but the, we've been we've been so used to him mate. That whenever you get a, a player like Young Yilmaz coming in and really has really blossomed in the last couple of weeks and months when he's had a really good manager behind him, you see what we can get. You see that the level that he needed to step up to and and, and he, he just wasn't able to hit it. And I think he just crept up on him, mate. And look, he, he's, he's, a, he's a Croatian under 21 or he's a Croatian international. I've just read some of his comments there about Fabio. He's a Croatian international, mate. He's, a, you know, he's, he's, he's obviously well regarded. So I think he'll... It, you know, again, I think he probably would have been better suited to maybe Italian football, where it's maybe a wee bit slower paced and things like that there. But like you, mate, good luck to him. He's, he's been a good servant. We, you know, we cost us, what, a million quid, 1.1 million pound. Yeah. Good, uh, yeah. It'll, it'll, but I think we need to move on, mate. And, and you know, I think what you might see is in the next year, two years, that back four completely changing. Because I couldn't see I think... Connor... You know, at 32, you know, I couldn't see Tab mm. at 32 being used as much as the next season and two seasons goes on. And I we think, need more dynamism and, and, and legs and things in there, don't we? I think I think we'll see a quite a quite a quite a big change in playing squad over the over the summer. And that we, that's what Paul's just said. It's gonna be interesting to see what Clement does in the summer. I think he wants his own right. players in. I think I think he will ensure we get uh right back cover because Tav is what 32, 33 now. Um yeah. he's he's, he's, he's the guy. The, yeah, the guy, the guy, to be fair, to have the guy's a machine. Uh, yeah. he, can, he can probably go for another couple of seasons. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. There's, there's, I saw rumors about uh, the Saudi Pro League looking at to have um, 40 million. 20 million, million. Man, if they want to come in and give us 40, yeah, 40, 40, 40, 15. 40. <laughs> listen, we all we always we always un listen, we always undersell our players. And if Celtic can turn them and go, oh, he's yeah. worth 100 million and, and get six of them, we can do the exact same thing, you know what I mean? So yeah, big Fiona, person, big I, 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 Fiona, I, would, I absolutely definitely. would a hundred percent back you up on that statement. I, I would I bring heard Patterson rumors. back. I would bring I Patterson heard. back in a heartbeat. You know, listen, I don't want to see. I, I, I don't mind Everton as a football club, but you know, it could they could be they could be heading down. Mm, um, yeah, you know, so you never know. I saw, you never know. Mate. I saw I saw a report or or, or, or rumors that uh, I'm hearing rumors that um, Everton still haven't paid as a transfer fee for Patterson, so they right. always so we so. If that if that's true, you know a deal could be struck. If if we were interested, if he wanted to come back, and if Everton wanted to offload, then there maybe maybe something could be done. It depends. Mm -hmm. so, once again, it's all I think you'll have. Good. I think I think I think even watching him for Everton, I know Sean Dyche doesn't fancy him at times, and, and has maybe going back to some of their older fullbacks. But you know, it, it, it's clear to see the kid's got something. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. he, he's he's got a hell of an engine. He's got he's got great legs. I would love to see him back. I absolutely would. I would love to see him back. I think. I think. I think. You know, look. It was. It was unrealistic to expect him to stay, considering he wasn't always first choice, and considering the money that was talked about. What was it, like fifteen million or something, Paul? It, it, sixteen you know, fact, million, yeah. Sixteen million, something like that, mate. So, look, it would. It would have been criminal to, to not accept that, considering he wasn't the first choice. You know, but like, you know, Paul McGarrigal, you, you raised a really good point there, mate. It'll be interesting to see. We've got so many things to talk about. You know, people talking about RFC 72 there, saying about Cortez and Sima. You know, would they be coming back? You know, or is it, I think what, what you know, will have to be is very prudent with our money, you know, and, and look, you don't know what's going to be available in the summer. I would say bring Cortez in. I think the money for Cortez, Sima, could we afford the money that, that's on offer for, you know, it's probably being expected for Sima. Would we have a hell of a big budget on a, on a left winger? You know, who knows? Who yeah. knows? Um, I think I, for, I think top seven million for Sima. I think I, I think uh, unfortunately I think Fabio Silva is, is unrealistic. I mean he's yeah. Wolves bottom for Wolves bottom for thirty five million for crying right. out loud. So right. listen, they, they, uh, you know, they, let him go back and see out his contract, and we'll get him back in a couple of years. You know, for free, yeah. free transfer. You know, um, <laughs> you know, but like, 
Paul McGarrigle will no doubt, mate, closer to the time. We'll be doing lots of pods about you know when the season. And I can't wait for that as yeah. well. I can't wait. I can't wait for Ranger to be back in nine days, mate. But I also can't wait for next season because I think Clermont, given the opportunity to really mold this team and shape this team in his own image, is where we're really going to see this Rangers team push on another level, mate. Looking forward to it. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, and at that, um, which we've now waffled on from our team, <laughs> uh, we'll, call it, we'll, call a, we'll call a close to the podcast. I just want to say thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening. Um, yes, thank sorry, you. Say, sorry we've been away for a couple of weeks. But say, we've all had personal commitments, and it was just, we were just unable to uh, uh, to fulfil the commitment of the, doing a pod for you. We hope you've enjoyed this evening. It's just been like a kind of rambling chat. Mona. What Basically, what I'd say to you is, and Jake G will attest to this as well, is what you've experienced this evening is pretty much our group chat on on, on WhatsApp. <laughs> we, we just we just start going off on tangents and start talking, and it all circles back to something at the, at, at the end. So, look, thank you very much uh, for joining us this evening. Very, very much appreciated. Gio, JD's, thank you very much. Come you're on. very welcome, man. Just, just highlighting JD's comment there about who's had more minutes this season, Ruth for Scott from the pod. Listen, mate, that is a, that is a statistic that we need to check out. That is a right, leave statistic. I wait. I wait. I want you to leave that on the screen, all right? Because I'm going to take a quick photograph of that and I'm going to send this to Scott and I'll ask his opinion on it. Because... So while you're doing that, I'll fill everybody in. Scott left us a wee voice note today to say that he's away with work and him and yeah. Fridge are away with work. So I bet you the fuckers aren't even watching us tonight, mate. I bet you they're not even nope. watching us. And they're away and with that's... work and he said he's away to get pissed and they're and tonight and then they're working somewhere away tomorrow. So that's what they're doing. And Paul McGarrow says 100% roof. Definitely. Sorry, Nate. Did you get a photograph of that? Yes. 100% Ruth. 100% Ruth. So listen, I know Baz is back. Hopefully Baz will be back. I know a couple of the other guys are, are busy. Snags is away. Yep. Snags is away He's in America, the yeah. today at the minute. He's away in America. Um, so I'm looking forward to Well, I'm sure next week we'll have four or five back, I'm sure. But um, yeah, until then, mate, listen, again, you know us. We can come back every week and talk about this. We love doing it. We love talking about Rangers. Um, hopefully we've got some stuff, some good stuff to talk about the Paula Geo show. There it is. I'll I'll look over here. I'll look over here. There you go. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> I can see that's you obviously in the wee pink, the wee pink blazer and all, isn't it? Uh no, actually that I've I've no oh, hang on. What's up? Yeah, uh, yeah, you can I'll go the pink and you can agree with me. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's and listen, that just, one, just yeah. the just the echo what you say, mate. Yes, that's kind of that doesn't really uh, just the echo what you said. Thanks to everyone um, for tuning in tonight. I know um, there's not a lot of Rangers chat these days, but look, just, you know, uh, I'm sure in nine days' time, the, the tension, the hype will all start up again. We've got we've got the, the first game back, man. What a game back at Ibrox, you know what I mean? Hebs, they'll be smart, and I think the players will be oh. busting, busting to get back out there again. Busting to get back out there. So, yeah, yes, yeah. mate, thanks very much, and uh, thanks again to everyone for coming in tonight. Yeah, and uh, at that, I will just wrap up here once again. Thank you very much. Join us, uh, same time, uh, same place next week. It might just be Gio and I again. You never know. But uh, Paul and Gio, we'll Paul and Gio. We'll, yeah, Paul and Gio show. we'll do our best to entertain you again. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy your weekend, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. It's at half an hour. Later. When I was a young boy, my father said to me, Put this scarf around your neck and sing the blues with me And now I am much older, there's a place I want to be It's red faucet, it's beautiful, it's steeped in history And I know what I'll find when the place comes to life I got that battle Coming over me And I got